everyone. Good morning again and again. I'm Pastor Eun Hye Choi of Glenview United Methodist Church. I welcome all of you, especially online worshipers. We are right now. We are on Facebook Live. You can type "peace be with you," "good morning," or "welcome." And who are here in person worship? Please look around your neighbors, and you can nod, you can wave, and peace be with you. Yeah, and I see Holy One inside. Good morning, everyone. I wanna just to remind you. Yay! Dick is gonna run for president. <laughs> Dick for president. <laughs> Uh, today is Communion Sunday, All Saints Sunday, and also Communion Sunday. When you worship at home, please prepare any house bread and drink. You, I mean, beverage, and also because today is All Saints Sunday, you can prepare a candle or some candles remembering your loved ones who moved into eternal life and in eternal light. We are here this morning, unite our hearts, worship our God, who gives us this life and eternal life. Let us lift up our hearts and join in the prayer of confession. God of the heavenly host, we confess that unlike your great saints, we are just average disciples. We make our way through the streets and malls of life and at times along lonely byways, trying to give our best, yet rarely achieving half of the good which we intended. We remember loved ones whose faithfulness once lit our path and whose steadfast love warmed our hearts, yet we admit that our own light flickers and our love becomes lukewarm. We repent all that has compromised and sullied us and hurt those around us. We repent and pray for the forgiveness which only you can decree and the renewal which only your spirit can enact. Hear the good news, Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Saints of God, patient. 
Testament reading is from Acts 21, 7 through 14. We continued our voyage from Tyre and landed at Ptolemais, where we greeted the brothers and sisters and stayed with them for a day. Leaving the next day, we reached Caesarea and stayed at the house of Philip the Evangelist, one of the seven. He had four unmarried daughters who prophesied. After we had been there a number of days, a prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. Coming over to us, he took Paul's belt, tied his own hands and feet with it, and said, The Holy Spirit says, In this way, the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem will bind the owner of this belt and will hand him over to the Gentiles. When we heard this, we and the people were pleaded we and the people there pleaded with Paul not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, Why are you weeping and breaking my heart? I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die in Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. When he would not be dissuaded, he gave up and said, The Lord's will be done. The Gospel reading is from Matthew 16, 21 through 28. From that time on, Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and suffer many things at the hands of the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and on the third day be raised to life. Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said, this shall never happen to you. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then Jesus said to his disciples, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it but whoever loses their life for me will find it. What good will it be for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what they have done. Truly I tell you, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. The word of God for the people of God. Would you please join me in a prayer? Let us pray. A gracious God, the creator of heaven and earth, life here and life eternal, this morning we gather together and unite our hearts to praise you for the life everlasting. Oh God, please touch our hearts, open, open our eyes that we can see you not only through the light, but also through the darkness because all are your creation, all are loved. Thank you, God. Amen. Every morning when I wake up, the first thing I do is that I looking at the window to see how sunny that day might be. I set my face toward the windows most of the time when I'm inside because I want to see the sun. Looking at the world under the sun is the best joy for me. I believe most people set their faces toward the sun, not darkness. But we know that sun rises every morning after dark night. In her book, Learning to Walk in Dark, Barbara Brown Taylor says like this, I have learned things in the dark that I could never have learned in the light, things that have saved my life again and again, over and over again. 
so that there is really only one logical conclusion. I need darkness as much as I need light. That's what she says in her book. Today we celebrate All Saints Sunday, All Saints Day, that we, we remember our loved ones who moved to the life after death, the new life, eternal life. We believe they are now in the everlasting life, light, and love. They passed the darkness and entered into God's glorious shining like the sun. We do not call Jesus a saint. Jesus is the Son of God, Christ, and Redeemer. But when he lived on the earth as the Son of Man, a human being, he faced the same human conditions of pain, suffering, and death, as all saints do. As Gospel of John chapter 1 says, the word, Logos, was life, and life was the light, and the light was for all people, everyone. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. I read that again and again because I always toward the sun and the light. I read it again. The darkness doesn't. The Bible doesn't say darkness cannot. The Bible says the darkness doesn't extinguish the light. The light Jesus came to the world, and the darkness didn't extinguish the light. If we reverse it, the light didn't condemn the darkness. The light Jesus himself embraced darkness to teach us how to walk in the dark and finally to move to the eternal light after darkness. Jesus told his disciples again and again of his coming death and resurrection. In today's Gospel reading, we heard Jesus telling his disciples that he was going to Jerusalem while knowing that the coming suffering and death in Jerusalem. Peter jumped out of his seat, grabbed Jesus, and rebuked Jesus. God forbid, Lord, this won't happen to you at all. We may think how dare Peter rebuke to Jesus while calling him the Lord. But can any of us blame Peter? We want to do the same thing for our loved ones. In the name of love, we condemn the dark and rebuke our loved ones who are willing to go and to pass the darkness to get to the final place of light because we are afraid of dark. But that's not love as Peter showed Jesus. You may know the movie Coco, it's a beautiful movie. It is a 2017 computer animated movie which was produced by Pixar Animation Studio. The concept for movie Coco is inspired by the Mexican holiday, the Day of the Dead. It's so beautiful animation, the colors, and the, and the concept is so unique and beautiful too. The main character, 12 years old boy Miguel, moves into the land of the dead, pursuing the mission of recovering his family's legacy of music with the mission in his heart and passion for the music and love for his family. The boy is not afraid of moving between the dead and the living and between light and dark. As long as we have a mission for life, we can set our face toward the life after death. The mission for Jesus was loving for the world and bring the world to God's everlasting love and life. So Jesus set his face toward Jerusalem. As Jesus did, Paul also set his face toward Jerusalem after his third mission trip. 
Everywhere he went, he started a new church and ignited some conflicts, violence, and hatred among people who oppose them. We may think the message of Christianity is all about peace, but actually wherever Paul went and started a new church, there was conflicts, violence, and hatred. When he told his friends and supporters that he had to go to Jerusalem, they all jumped out of seats and held Paul back, worrying that Jerusalem was too dangerous for him. Paul told them, why are you weeping and breaking my heart, that I am ready not only to be arrested, but even to die in Jerusalem for the sake of the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Knowing his mission to spread the good news of Jesus Christ, Paul was willing to set his face toward Jerusalem. He wanted to go to Rome eventually, the center of the world in his time, to bring Jesus to the people of Rome. He knew that he needed to go to Jerusalem first, to go to Rome. Some scholars say that Paul thought the final destination of his mission was Spain. He was willing to go to Jerusalem, to go to Rome and Spain for his mission. He kept pushing his mission through both the light and the dark, and both joy and sufferings. He didn't seek only the security of light. Why do we love light? Because we feel secure under the sun, under the light. That's why I always set my face toward the sun and light, because I seek for security. But Jesus and Paul didn't do that. Through the light and dark, through the suffering and joy, they always Set, they, set their face toward Jerusalem. When the time of execution was coming near, while Paul was in a jail cell in Rome, he knew everyone, everyone who loved him, deserted him already. He wrote a letter to his disciple Timothy. Timothy was like a son and a disciple for Paul. And Paul wrote a letter to him to come to him with his scroll and a winter coat. He was cold, lonely, betrayed, and waiting for coming death in a dark jail cell. He says to Timothy, everyone deserted me. I hope that God doesn't hold it against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength so that the entire message would be preached through me and so all the nations could hear it. Until the last day of his life, he pursued the mission of preaching the good news. When we decided our son Tim's name, I told Chris, his name should be Timothy, because I love this story. At the last when Paul was waiting for death, the only one stood nearby him was Timothy, like a son and a disciple for Paul. Then what is the mission for you and me who live in the 21st century in America today? I don't believe our mission is saving the world. It was Jesus' mission and we are saved by his grace already. Jesus accomplished, completed his mission. Also, I don't believe our mission is go to the end of the world to bring the message of Jesus Christ. Our ancestors of our faith did that already. Some people really might condemn and rebuke me but I believe that way. I believe we need to support the world to raise their own leaders of their faith and church 
rather than we go there and do their work and tell them what to do. I really don't believe we go to the end of the world to spread the message of Jesus. Our ancestors already did that. We just need to support the world to raise, to grow their own churches and their own leaders. And I might be wrong, but then what is the mission for you and me, especially myself? What is the mission that compel me, compel us to set our face toward Jerusalem that we can dare to do anything and be ready for anything that we go to Jerusalem? There was a Korean poet whose name was Chun Sang-byung. He died. He's my best favorite poet. He was born in the dark time of Korea. When he was a young poet, he participated in a political protest, many protests, but this one major thing against military government. He was arrested, tortured so badly, falsely accused, and imprisoned for, for a long time. When he got out of the prison, no one remembered him. No one recognized him. His friend Oled, his all his friends already deserted him, and he became homeless. But he kept writing poems praising the beauty of the world that God created. He was a lifetime Catholic Christian. When he knew that he needed to set his face toward Jerusalem, he wrote a poem. The title was Going Back to Heaven. The poem goes like this. I will go back to heaven again, hand in hand with the morning dew that melts at a touch of sunrise. I will go back to heaven and heaven again with the dusk together, just we two, as a, at a sign from a cloud after playing in the slopes. I will go back to heaven again at the end of my outing to the beautiful world. I will go back and say, that was beautiful. It is a poem by the person who was tortured and forgotten. But he prays God and he thinks that that was beautiful. The life was beautiful that God gave us as a gift. I believe the mission of our life is praising God who created the beautiful world and thanking God for God's generous gift of life here and eternally. Then when our time comes to set our face toward Jerusalem, we accept that going back to God is also a part of the mission of our life. Today we celebrate all saints who accomplished, who completed their mission in God's love and grace. We remember them and we celebrate them. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, thank you for this beautiful world, beautiful life here we have. And someday we will have an eternal kingdom. Thank you, God. Amen. Now it is our offering time with our gratitude, generous heart, and online worship, worshiping worshipers. Please go to our church website. You can give online or you can mail your offering. And it is Thanksgiving season. We can be generous for all blessings we have here and we will have eternally. Thanks be to God. Joy.
and minds for the Holy Communion, please take out the insert and online worshipers, I believe that insert in our, your head and you received. The Lord be with you. Lift up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Almighty God, creator of heaven and earth, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, God of the priests and the prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and the martyrs, God of our mothers and fathers, God of our children to all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, O God. He broke the bread and gave it to his disciples. And he said, Take it. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the meal was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, O God. And he gave it to his disciples. He said, drink from this. This is my blood of a new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of this, your mighty act in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and gathered online, and on this gift of bread and wine, make them for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, for saints no longer with us, especially those whom we name before you. We lift up names of our church GUMC members first. Shirley Govins.
Helen Murphy, Ellen Fagerberg, Ed Burns, Dorothy Newman, Marlene Lassina, Helen Wilson, and now we lift up names, our church members, family, and friends. Krola Schmidt, Barbara Heckenbach, Perry Jo Bailey, Perry Greg Staten, Abby McQuarter Murrell, Ralph Lindenberger, Wentworth Ford, Ruth Hanna, Gloria Peña Fluet. It's our silent meditation time, remembering our loved ones. For all saints now living among us, who gift us with their presence in our lives, and for saints who will come after us, continuing your good news into the future, now, congregation, you may lift up names of saints in your hearts. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us join in the prayer Jesus taught all of us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we fit those trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now everyone, please find your communion kit. And online worshipers, prepare your bread and your cup. This kit has two layers. That first one, peel Peel off the first layer, and that's your communion bread. I wanna, I want to keep it, not not take it yet, and then peel off the second layer. That's your 
communion juice. And now I want to lift them up both. Body of Christ broken for you. Blood of Jesus Christ shed for you. Take it and drink it. Let us pray. Thank you, God, for the promise of the life everlasting because we have faith in that everlasting life. We can face tomorrow, we can face Jerusalem. And we can keep marching toward Zion with thankful hearts and with eyes that we can see the beauty of your creation. With the responsibility for our community, for our neighbors, for the coming generations, you beat our hearts And you give us courage to live with you and with our neighbors. Thank you, God, for your Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for this time we eat and drink him. Amen. Now it's time we share some announcements. I have a couple of announcements that we try a new thing. At 11 o'clock, we will have a coffee hour. Not real coffee hour. (laughs) It's coffee hour online. Worshippers at home, I believe you receive that coffee hour Zoom link. 11 o'clock, you click that. I will go to my office and start coffee hour Zoom link and you all join. And worshipers here, you can use your phone or go to car and use your phone or drive quickly, go home, and then hit that Zoom link. And then you prepare your own uh, donuts and coffee and we will see each other and say, God bless you, what's going on in your life. We will have about 20 minutes coffee hour on on Zoom, that's a new thing we try, and that way we hope that we keep connected in this difficult time. And number two, as you know, by the guideline of Illinois Health Department, we limit our in-person worshipers. That's why we do a reservation system and sign up genius. If you have some issue with the sign of yourself, feel free to contact church office or me. Anytime you can call, you can email church office or myself anytime, and we will help you. We will do it for you too. Our priority is safety for everybody and still joyfully worship our God and praise God and share the communion. Uh, a fellowship and keep doing our old ministries. Now, the grace of Jesus Christ and the love of God who give us eternal life and the communion of the Holy Spirit who guides us, who sustains us to that eternal life. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.